Hey guys, welcome back to Rewild, where we talk about environment, psychology, and other interesting things. And in today's episode, we are asking if plants feel pain. So recently I stumbled across a pretty cute, funny little TikTok from a tree intuitive, I think she called herself. And she was talking about the consciousness of trees and her process of communicating with the trees and what the trees said back to her. Now, in traditional psychology, this might seem a little bit like some high woo. Um, in my graduate program in eco-psychology, we actually did discuss talking with the trees as if this was a legitimate process. And I think it's important, especially from an eco-psychological perspective, to validate at least the attempt and the desire to communicate more deeply with more than human life. So I love this, and I enjoyed this woman's TikTok a lot. I felt like some of the things she said kind of checked out to me. And so I sent it to my husband, and he responded, of course, with a laugh emoji, to which I replied, no, we're serious. We're serious about the trees. This isn't a joke. Some of the wild things this tree intuitive described were where the soul goes when a tree dies, how trees feel about dying, and um, a request from the tree community to give them a little bit of a warning two or three days before cutting a tree down. Yeah, you know, this three-day rule seems pretty sound and like um, a small thing to offer. It's also a process that in my family growing up, um, partly possibly because we're also part indigenous, speaking to nature as if it can hear you is commonplace. And especially if you have to eradicate something, cut a tree down, you know, knock out a spider's web nest or something like that. Um, It was considered normal to sometimes warn a population, you know, using your psychic ability or whatever that, hey, I'm coming in tomorrow or in a couple of days, I'm going to be spraying this pesticide or we're going to be cutting and trimming these areas. Please be warned to the more than human world. So if that sounds a little bit crazy to you, that's totally fine. That was my intro to this video because my partner thought it was a little bit crazy. I have a fun story about my own experience felling my first tree. When I was in my 20s, I worked very briefly for a construction and tree falling company. And I cut down my first tree and it was really traumatic. A bird ended up getting hurt a hummingbird's nest that was in the tree. That was my first and last tree that I ever cut down myself. And the guys that I worked for were sort of chuckling and laughing that I was never really going to be able to make it in this industry because of my little compassionate heart worrying about the habitat of all these animals. Something I didn't really grasp fully when I fell that tree was how much of an ecosystem that thing was. That you know, in addition to the very visible distress of the hummingbird's nest that I disturbed, there were a a whole lot of other animals that were really ruffled up and disturbed by what we had done. So I think it's really valid and sweet, even if it's not necessarily scientifically valid, to consider trying to communicate with other species when we're tromping around in their area and in a larger extent, to try to limit our interactions with habitats that don't need to be disturbed in the first place. So I liked the three-day rule, and I felt like a personal connection to it, having been someone that disturbed a whole habitat (laughs) one day at work, and knowing that I really wish I had been able to warn not only the tree, but everything in it, that this was happening so that that death didn't occur. That really honestly broke my heart. I stayed after work for hours on the phone with Animal Rescue to see if we could save the other baby bird. And we ended up nailing a little box of nails. We nailed one to the tree and got him up there and his parents started feeding him. So hopefully he made it. We at least got to save one bird. But this brings me back to the original purpose of this video. And that is, do plants... And specifically, do trees feel pain? So obviously from my introduction, I kind of think they might feel something like pain. And many other hippies and woo-woo people are absolutely convinced not only might the more than human world feel things like pain, but we could communicate with it. But 
going to a more scientifically validated perspective and a more mainstream perspective, I think it's kind of also responsible, maybe from a neuroscience perspective, to say definitively no, that in short, plants and trees at least don't feel pain the way we do. I think that it's also important that we don't anthropomorphize, which means we don't project our human experience onto the experience of other plants, animals, and fungi, assuming that their experience of consciousness and sentience is exactly the same as ours. That said, I also think the hippies and the more watery, um, mystical people of our world are also pretty valid to assume that something like emotion or something like preferences, needs, concerns might still be felt and communicated in this ecosystem and for other beings that are not human. Human beings, historically, we've always, I felt personally, in my opinion, had a deficit in terms of our level of capacity, or at least our level of exercise in compassion for other species that are not our own, and especially even each other. Right now, we're looking at a lot of pop-up global wars that are incredibly unethical and sad. And so sometimes we can't even be humane to each other and our own species, let alone other species that are very different from us. So personally, I think that there is a big scientific bias in the traditional scientific community against really understanding the fact that genetically, in terms of our DNA, we are more alike than different, even to vastly different species from our own. And one thing that sentient life all shares is a desire to continue on. So I would wager that things like fear and negative emotions associated with danger would definitely still present in their own way, whatever we would call it in lieu of fear, for the animal kingdom and for the plant kingdom. So I thought in closing this video, I would talk a little bit about interesting research that has been proven around the communication of plants and what that looks like. We have seen through research that trees communicate with each other through signaling and sometimes will use fungus in their root systems to send chemical signals that kind of notify other trees in a grove of danger and of deaths in the grove and other things like that. So it's very, very fascinating and I'll link to some of that deeper research in the description of this video so you can look at some of the wild worlds of plant and animal communication. For anybody who has pets or anything like that, you all know that we communicate with our pets. Um, the more time we spend with an animal, the more um, that feeling of the capacity to communicate feels strong, right? But I think this also applies at least for plants with each other, even if you are skeptical of our capacity to communicate with plants as human beings. I would say, though, that colloquially, I think a lot of gardeners and plantophiles agree that at least paying attention and having some sensitivity to the needs of your plants, especially if you're in sort of a symbiotic relationship with plants, it might start to also feel that way. The closer you are to the more than human world, the more you will begin to communicate with it. I think that this is also a very standard practice and belief in indigenous communities. And to some extent, it helps us to get out of possibly a more ethnos, uh, Eurocentric, ethnocentric perspective of reality and what is valid to research and not in the mainstream global scientific community. So I just want to check my notes real quick and make sure I haven't left anything out for this intro to If Plants Feel Pain. And I think we got it all in this video, but I did want to talk about one researcher who was, I believe, the first, or at least the most infamous in history, my boy Baxter. And he was the one who hooked up little plant leaves to what are now known as lie detector tests. And he would use the electromagnetic signals from the leaves into the lie detector tests to get a sense of what that plant was feeling. 
So when we ask the question, do plants feel pain? Do trees feel pain? A lot of people will pop up and go, yes, they do. There was research that proved it. And I'm here to tell you with a lot of love and consolation that Baxter's research was not very um, scientifically accepted or relevant. His work has since been disproven. So this is not the video to go deep into that. I would like to save that for next week. I'm going to do a deep dive into Baxter, what he was about, what his research methods were, and why ultimately they've kind of failed and been debunked by the scientific community as a whole. Nevertheless, I just want to say I love Baxter. I think the fact that he set out and tried to talk with the plants and tried to collect data on his attempts to talk to the plants makes him just automatically one of the coolest guys in my heart for eco-psychology and green consciousness history and research. We need more Baxters in the world. I would love to become someone like that and I hope that some of you might as well because researching whether or not or how to communicate with the more than human world is a really important key piece i believe in healing and repairing our wider ecosystems and having a healthier relationship with nature itself so stay tuned for that video and thank you for listening to this and i hope you got something interesting about it like share and subscribe if you had fun here and if you would like to hear more about the researcher Baxter and everything he was up to. I'll be posting that next weekend.